Good morning, and welcome to our worship service this morning, and I'm so glad you could join us. This has been a hard week in our country, and it's been one of turmoil and violence, and today we come to seek our Lord and Savior, who comes in peace and asks us to be the bearers of peace. So as we gather together today to hear about the Word in this season of the church, in this Pentecost season, We're here this morning to not just praise, but to reflect on the words that our Lord gives us and hopefully to to write them on our hearts so that we might be the bearers of peace and the good news offered to us through our Savior. I'm so glad you're with us this morning and stay tuned now as we begin our worship service in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
please join us in our call to worship, which is found in your bulletin. It is good to praise the Lord, to make music in your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour out your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we turn to our reading this morning, I'm going to share with you one. Normally we have a number of readings, and there's two reasons for that. 
One is because of time constraints during the summer season as we have a number of people trying to make these services happen and they're busy doing other things. And secondly, because this reading is very powerful and I want us to focus on it and I'll share a message after I'm done. It comes to us from Exodus, the 19th chapter. When God is speaking to his people, his people really for the first time, and I invite you to turn to the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, and we'll begin at the second verse. After breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and said, give these instructions to my family, the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on earth. For all the earth belongs to me, and you will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. So Moses went and did just that. Why do I want to share this with you this morning? Well, if you remember in my opening, I talked about our nation having a difficult time over these past weeks in the wake of a horrific death and the reaction to that death. And you know that our church has worked hard to imagine no racism, to bring about equality. But it seems interesting that in a nation that depicts itself as a godly nation, that we should still have many of the troubles we have today. And most of it is because we don't obey God when he asks us to listen to him. Now, if you take a good hard look at our history of our nation, it was a godly nation founded by Puritans, hyped up by slaves, God-fearing people going to church and then out into the fields to mine their slaves. Others have been God-fearing people and at the same time disliking the people around them. So what is it about our human nature that God just has a difficult time getting around? It seems interesting that God carried the Israelites out of Egypt. He showed them that slavery was bad, that you don't want to have people subservient to other people at any time. He tells us to love our neighbors. He tells us to be good to those around us. And the Israelites, what did they do? They fell right into the same human trap. Every time God told them to follow and listen to him, they would for a while, and then they got their own notions. And what happened when they got their own notions is that they fell into trouble. They fell into chaos. They fell into disarray. They stopped being good people. So he would send a prophet, and they would kill him, or they would ignore him. Finally, he sent himself, his son, and what did they do? They crucified him. And then he sent his Holy Spirit. And we heard about that in Pentecost, and we heard about it in last week, that it comes in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit he sends to raise up a new priesthood. And for 2,000 years, he's been trying to raise up a new priesthood. And within that priesthood, there have been those who have listened to God's voice and those who have listened to their own. You know, one thing I was told is there are people who are shepherds and we're supposed to be shepherds, good shepherds, not just pastors. Every Christian should be shepherding those around them to the goodness of God, listening to his voice. But there are also wolves and all too often there are butchers who fleece the sheep and then sacrifice them for their own good. We as a church have got to make stands. And we stand by those who say black lives matter. And people will say, wait, all lives matter. Yes, they do. Yes, they do, without question. 
But right now, there's a lost sheep. And Jesus says, go protect the one that is in danger. And right now, many young lives are lost. Many young men are killed because they are in danger of being considered evil by the color of their skin, by their, a, a different culture, because people have it in their minds that because they are black or big, they are a danger. Now, I've worked in prisons. I've been in the military. I've worked with every kind of culture under the planet. I count as some of my best friends men who've been convicted of heinous crimes. I also count among my best friends Muslims, imams, as well as those other ones that used to be our foe, the Catholics. And how about those Jews? Who are we when we think we're better? Who are we when we take God's righteousness as our own? We are the enemy. And we're no longer speaking for Christ. We're speaking for our fears. We're speaking for the enemy. We're speaking for the devil. God says, listen to me. Keep my commands. Keep my commands. Do we know them? Do we write them on our hearts? Do we remember them as he tells us to, to write them on our doorposts and on our gates so that when we leave the house, we're carrying God with us and not our own attitudes of fear or self-righteousness? Who are we when we leave God behind and start to take his place with our own sense of judgment, our own sense of righteousness? We've got serious problems in our nation and they're not going to be solved by political parties. They're going to be solved by good men and women taking stands for what's right. Now, some people say disband the police force. Foolish. Why? Because left to our own devices, we will be evil. I need corrective courses in my life. That's why I stick close to Christ. Because I know without him, I would be a horrible person. We all have the potential of being horrible. All of us are Cain. All of us are able. All of us have good and bad. The question is today and this week, as we contemplate, as we pray, which are you listening to? Have you given your life to Christ? Are you listening to him? Are you wrestling with this issue? Or has your mind already been made up? Because if it's already made up, you better be darn sure that it's on the right side. Because we are who we are, and we shall stand before the Lord. We are who we are to our neighbors, and our neighbors are not just the ones that look like us or sound like us. They are God's people. In the great command, he says, go into all nations, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, those, all those nations have many colors, many beliefs, many preconceived ideas, many different practices. Learning to love them, learning to know them, learning to share with them the love of God, that's our responsibility. So I leave you with this. God has carried you this far. What have you done for him lately? What have you done to thank him, to praise him, and to help build his kingdom? Because if you've uttered a, 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 a slur, if you've said, well, those people, are, those people are our people, we are they, and they are us. Because we are God's people. In the short passage that I read to you, he says, this is my creation. I'm trying to raise up a group of leaders that will show them what it means to be holy. And as a baptized Christian, that's your responsibility. Not just mine. We are a priesthood of all believers. So before we start looking at someone else, let's make sure we check ourselves. Because I know at times there's a bigot in me. 
at some times I, am, I know I'm privileged. I've been blessed to be a, time and time again. And I owe it to those around me to love my neighbor as myself. Words to live by. Thank you. And God bless you. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Good morning. Now it's time for our joys and concerns. And remember, if you have any joys and concerns you'd like to share with us,
please send them in to us. This morning, we pray for Susan, Wilma, Bill, Cameron, Monique, Anne, Roy, Jim Martin, Patrick, Michelle, Brady, Mandy, Brian, Charlie, Michael, Dave, Peter Woodcock, Rusty, Monica, Vicki, Janice, Adrian, Ivona, John. We also have many cancer patients, and all these folks need our desperate prayers. Beginning with Diane, Nicole, Jim, Lisa, Barbara, Hannah, Dick, Sandy Walker, Christy, Mark, Troy, Deb, Susan, Michelle, Scott, Paul, Carrie, Michael, Ethan, Brandy, Barb, Susan, Veronica, Catherine, uh, Callie, Michelle, Rosie, David, and Lucy. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and we love you. Lord, we lift up all these people to you, Lord. There are people that need strength and guidance and wisdom and understanding, people that struggle with addictions. Lord, people that don't have peace. Father, these folks that have cancers and other diseases and infirmities, Lord, we lift them to you. God, we ask that you will touch and heal each and every one, Lord. I pray that you will minister to them by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will give them your peace. Allow them to feel your presence, God. Lord, I pray that uh, you will just continue to bless and meet every need that, is, that these folks have this morning, Lord. So many people struggle with addiction. So many people struggle with so many things in life, Lord. Whatever it is, give them your strength. Give them your peace. Guide them and direct them. Lord, I just praise you and I love you. I lift these things to you in faith, believing in you and your hand and your power to do all these things because we ask by faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with another day, and we are truly grateful. As we go throughout this day, use us in our gifts that you have so freely given to us for the betterment of your kingdom. For we are blessed to know you, we are blessed to be in you, and we are certainly blessed by you. We pray this through Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I thank you for joining us this day. As you go forward into a, another week, which will probably bring turmoil and stress and other things, go with the peace of the Lord in your hearts. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in his love. Go in his care. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us this morning for our time for worship and our worship service. It's going to be a few more weeks before we actually can start congregating and our task force is gathering momentum to try to figure out exactly how we'll do that. But until then, you can be assured that we'll still be doing this. And even after we open, we'll still be doing these, these online services. So I just ask that you have a good week. Have a blessed week. May it be contemplative. May you think about things. May you pray about things because the Lord is trying to work through you to build his kingdom. Have a blessed week, and may you rest in Christ. Thank you.